Well, thanks a lot for staying with us here on Sunrise Live on E! on this uh, Thursday morning. Now, this Women's Month, the Africa Infrastructure Business Forum in Santon will be providing a platform for women's development in particular in once uh, deemed a very traditionally male-dominated infrastructure sector. The Africa Infrastructure Two-Day Conference takes place at the Santon Convention Center from the 21st to the 22nd of August and will host several leading women in infrastructure uh, experts as well um, speaking about uh, exactly where are we in terms of being active in Africa's infrastructure sector. So to talk more about the role of women in infrastructure development and perhaps some of those opportunities that have been made available um, as a result of such conversations from taking place in studio, I'm joined by the Chief Executive Officer of Trade Invest Africa, Leragdo Mataboche. It's a conversation that we invite you as always to be part of. You simply give us a call on 11 alternatively 1620. And also feel free to leave your comments on our Facebook as well as our Twitter pages as we look at the contribution of women, especially when it comes to the infrastructure sector. Thanks a lot, Lerata, for joining us this morning. Thank you for this. It's a now, pleasure. Now, we're looking at the, the, the conference in itself. One might say that there's nothing more painful than to watch actual conferences take place time and time again, because South Africa, unfortunately, is, known, is not new to being host to certain conferences and cinem seminars as well as the forums, right? Yep. How then do we stop preventing such forums or such conferences from being just a talk shop where we just mm. showcase what we have, we go home, and not even something tangible comes out of it? The importance of this particular conference is that we're not only bringing together business yeah. um, to talk among themselves, we're bringing the policy makers themselves. Uh, we've got the president of Zambia, for example, coming in, uh, a plethora of ministers from all over the continent to come and engage with business so that the conversations that we have can be translated into policy, can be translated into changes that we need to have mm. um, at government level, at policy level, or even at the businesses themselves, at boardroom level. Um, so the outcome of the conference really has to be uh, providing input to decision-making processes yeah. um, for us to move infrastructure forward. And how are women faring? I mean, the, the sector is largely deemed to be a male-dominated sector of, indus uh, of industry, simply because mm. not a lot of women. And, and also, I, I think it's also because of the history that we have, right? We've yeah. got some individuals that have been running businesses and infrastructure, et cetera, and even yeah. in development it, since... 1950s Absolutely. and they still own that sector of in, uh, industry yeah. uh, so how are new women or new individuals supposed to even get into this industry irrespective of even male or female so yeah. how are we fearing with regards to that we are still we still have a long way to go yeah in terms of transforming um, the infrastructure space more broadly not only in South Africa in the rest of the continent in the world even mm. um, so part still of largely European if I'm if I'm not incorrect N yes, not so much developing countries, for yeah. lack of a better term. Um, so part of the conversation and, and, and the participants that we're bringing in is the women, small uh, women-owned businesses, for example, to get a sense of where the opportunities lie and how they can tap into those opportunities. Um, and we, as Trade Invest Africa, as well as an initiative of, D of a DTI, have a strategic role to identify those uh, women-owned businesses, mm. to plug them into How the then do you start space. identifying it? I like this. How then do you start identifying those businesses that you say, okay, we can help back you up um, mm. in terms of whether it's to point you in the right direction of funding mm. because some of the projects are worth billions or hundreds Absolutely. of millions and they're going to need some form of funding to allow them. The capital aspect yeah. is the biggest bone of contention when it yeah. comes to infrastructure development. So at what level do you come in and how then do you start identifying those women-owned businesses? Mm. So when we have uh, large-scale infrastructure projects, for example, some mm. of the large businesses we work with, um, th some of the discussions and con conditions that we put on the table for them is that if we're going to be enabling you and facilitating your participation in these projects yeah. um, through the government government levers or whatever levers that we use, uh, we have an expectation for some supplier relationships and supplier development to occur. That's the only way we can transform because it's about big business partnering with small business mm. um, and part of that is we do work with the small business department for example we work with uh, other business associations to say let's find women owned businesses let's create them uh, where necessary um, so we look using quite a number of levers including the black industrialist program for example yeah. um, the strong focus to say we need women owned businesses in there we need uh, youth owned businesses in there so when we go out into the continent we make sure then that we bring in um, those sorts of businesses as part of our delegations and plug them into the strategic projects. Okay, let's talk a little out. bit about the strategic projects. So many would say that 
South Africans have got a while, I mean, we're doing well, but we've got a long, or black South Africans or black industrialists have mm -hmm. got a long while to go before we can actually be at that level where we're really equal in terms of some of those um, uh, 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 supplier projects and supply solutions that are being brought in mm -hmm. by Europe, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to the African continent where you find that Francophone speaking countries, for mm -hmm. example, are still predominantly very close. So a lot of times you'll see that their supplies, Angola, for example, the supplies will still be Portugal. You've got mm -hmm. the Democratic Republic of Congo where the supply would either still be uh, uh, Berlin or wherever it is, mm -hmm. or the previous colonizers. Mm -hmm. How then do you start breaking into those uh, markets? It starts with having strategic conversations about that. Mm. Um, what we're going to be doing as well, we've agreed, because th th that's, that's an area that we've identified as a challenge. South yeah. Africa has not necessarily penetrated Francophone Africa from a product Why? supplier. Why? Is it because of the, the language barrier, where, by the way, translators are ready and easily available if it is a translation aspect for, yeah. from French, because the, the French are more open to yeah. those who are French speaking. Mm. Why is it that they have not necessarily been that much more open? It's a number of issues. Um, obviously, the, the culture um, understanding. Um, South African businesses also need to begin to to, to be trained um, to engage with Francophone Africa and, and how doing business in Francophone Africa. So we having dialogue platforms, for example, bringing in um, the embassies of the, the respective countries to mm. say and to educate South African business to say, how do you do business in country X, which is Francophone? Uh, what are the cultural nuances that we need to be aware of? Yeah. Um, I think that's part of it, the, the information gap one. Um, and there's a particular level of risk aversion that occurs. Um, our companies tend to be more comfortable with what we know, with the SADC region, for example, mainly mm. Anglophone. Um, so, so it's really about um, exposing our companies to a different way of doing business. Yeah. One. And what about exposing the woman-owned companies to those industries? Because now that's a different monster altogether yeah. where patriarchy, let's be real, mm -hmm. patriarchy still plays a predominant role in the way in which business gets done because this must be all good and well in South Africa, in the South African context where yeah. you are empowering women, especially in the infrastructure development sector. Mm -hmm. But what about when they start leaving South Africa and mm -hmm. then they try to supply it in Zambia or they, mm -hmm. or, 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 you know, East or Kenya, for example. Is there still that element of patriarchy that must be overcome so that women in business, in particular mm -hmm. this sector, industry yeah. can stop being taken seriously? Absolutely. I mean, pa patriarchy, to begin with, is a global problem. Yeah. It's a global issue. Um, for us, what we emphasize is that we need to make sure that we take quality product out to the market. We need to make sure that we take businesses that we can back that are sustainable, that can guarantee supply. Um, some of the reasons why some of our companies don't make the headway that they need to make mm. is because they're not ready. Uh, not necessarily because it's of the gender, of the ownership, you know. Um, so our priority is that we support our businesses so that by the time they engage outside of South African borders, they are prepared. Um, there's um, quality of product, there is a guaranteed supply, um, and the relationships that we broker become sustainable as well. Yeah. Uh, so yes, there is a patriarchy element, but also there's the quality element that we need to take care of. So then when it comes to the quality aspect of it, then how then we start to getting more women. If I'm if I'm a woman, I like practicality. If I'm yeah, a woman absolutely. and I, a woman owned business and I'm watching this program right now mm. and here's Lerato telling me that there are opportunities with number one with the conference, attending the conference mm -hmm. so that you can capacitate yourself, but number two, the opportunity to do yeah. business outside of the South African context. Mm. How then do I start getting involved? I need our South African businesses youth-owned businesses yeah. um, to be aware that the DTI has a number of programs that support uh, business. For example, we've got what we call an exporter development program within the DTI, mm. where we take our companies, small or large, who have not yet engaged outside the borders of South Africa, take them to a full-on training program. Um, it's, it's about three to six months, depending on the level of development of that particular company. Sure. At the end of it, companies then are issued with what we call an exporter passport which means you have been capacitated with respect to what is needed to engage trade or invest in the rest of the continent or outside of South African borders broadly. Uh, you have been trained to understand what sort of standards your product would need to comply with, mm. um, what sort of regulatory issues you need to be aware of. Um, so that's a very important intervention that we have, um, and we encourage a lot of uh, our businesses to really take advantage of it, particularly women-owned businesses. Uh, we haven't seen enough of that as yet. Yeah. Um, so it, it's critical. 
because once our companies have gone through this process and through this program, uh, we are then able to provide the market access outside of the borders of South Africa. And then, so then you point them out to the existing opportunities, oh, whether it's within the SADC region, etc. Yeah. And then you do you help facilitate in terms of that we conversation, do. that initial conversation? We absolutely do. Yeah. Um, and we do it in a number of ways. It could be through trade fairs and pavilions where we expose we expose a product. It could be through uh, business missions that we take outward, that we take the companies along with to showcase their capabilities if they're those that mm. are able and willing to invest in a particular uh, project or program. Um, and also government-to-government -government platforms and dialogues. We include business in those discussions. So there are many ways in which we assist our businesses depending on uh, what is required at the particular time. Okay, now when we're looking at the involvement of businesses, I know that this from the 21st to the 22nd of August, it's a conference that is happening at the Santa Convention Center. Yeah. If I'm a woman-owned business, if I'm even a business that want to, or a smaller or developing business for mm. that matter, and I want to get involved in this, how do I become and how do I participate? Um, within this conference in itself, or am I even allowed to participate? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All businesses are allowed to participate. This is an opportunity for South African business, or the rest of African business, to converse about how we take the infrastructure development process of our own continent forward. Yeah. Um, and companies can register actually at africainfrastructure.co.za. Africainfrastructure.co.za. Okay. 